Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In this new episode we'll continue on with the retopology of this uh, dragon figurine. Uh, like I've said to you guys in the previous video, uh, you can find the download link for the high poly version of this model in the description below. So if you want to do your re the retopology yourself, you can actually get that and use my tutorial on how to do it and, and follow it through. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do the shoulders today. Uh, so we're just going to select it, select the shoulders and press the slash key on the keyboard to basically single them out. So we've got them over here. Now let's go in front view by holding alt and dragging around the uh, 3D space. And as you can see, the origin for the shoulders is not exactly sent perfect, you know, dead on center. Not really a problem. I think we can work with that uh, the way we have it. I, I, I'm doing this on purpose actually because I want to show you a method of how you can still mirror across the two models without having the model completely centered. So uh, first things first, let's create our mesh. So shift A and so create a plane, then press R on the keyboard, press X for the Y for the X axis and then the number nine zero to uh, rotate it in 90 degrees. And now let's bring it upwards by pressing G on the keyboard and scroll up so we can move this plane over here. Let's just scale it all down and then just drag it across the, over here to the, to the shoulder pads. We're also gonna go into our object properties and make sure we have it in front selected. And after we do that, we'll go and add a modifier, which is the shrink wrap modifier. And then with the eyedropper, select the shoulders. Uh, now we can move this object around so you can see it basically moves on the surface of the object. And now I want to add a mirror modifier. Uh, okay, so now with the mirror modifier added, we can go to object and set the origin of this object to, well actually no, what we need to do first is select the shoulder pads, press shift S on the keyboard and then say cursor to select it, which will then put the 3D cursor over here. Now select our plane again, shift S, and sorry, go to object and then, and then just say, ooh, that's not good. Uh, I don't know how, right, just go to the object and then set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now you can see that it's basically, um, you know, okay in terms of how it's supposed to be. Well, sort of. Um, the reason why it's, you know, why, why this, you know, happens this way is because we're basically now not in edit mode. So let's just make sure that we do this again. So set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Right, so once we've done that basically, um, you know, we've got it quite centered. It's not perfect, as you can see, it's just not, it's not really perfect because in essence, you'd want this mesh over here to move slightly in order to completely uh, be okay. But it should be okay the way we, ha we have it. If we need to modify it later, we can do that, it's not a problem. Right, okay, so now we've basically done this and you can see we can move it around and it will sort of match up quite nicely. These two shoulders are not exactly identical, but it's fine because if we do the geometry correctly on this side, we can, you know, with the mirror on the other side, we can adjust that and make it work for the other side as well. So, some of the things that we want to do here is basically make sure that we lay the foundation in the places that we, well, where we want to start. So we can start with the edge, for example. So just grab this, take it over like that. And then also grab this over here and put it this way. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a slight curve there. So you may, depending on, depending on how well you want to define this, you may want to basically follow that. So for example, here, if you want to follow it even more, then you do something like this. So you create a bit of a corner and then you uh, extrude this way. So just to follow that, that path along, which is, you know, it's quite nice if you can do that, if you, if you want to do that, basically. Um, so you could probably end around here. Yeah, something like that. Um, so again, again, you go across this way, maybe all about, till about here. One of the things that you want to make sure is that this feeds into this part over here. So what I mean by this is, you can basically do, let's say something like that. Yeah. Um, and then do something like this. In case you can, if you select this point over here, and if you press F on the keyboard, it should create an automatic uh, poly face like that. If it doesn't, just make sure you go into Edit, Preferences, 
into add-ons and search for F2 and activate that and then you should, should press be able to press F on the keyboard and just create these polygons very very easily like that which is quite handy indeed so I'm just creating this geometry like this and the reason why I'm doing that is so I can do you know these corners basically um, as you can see the shape qu moves quite a bit here so it's 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 like it's bent so I think it's you know, as I said, it's very important to follow sort of that that edge flow but just go for the big shapes first rather than tangle yourself into smaller ones because because of the procedural nature of how 3d works it's quite easy to go from uh, big to small uh, later on so you know, in this instance, for example, um, when I actually want to delete this face and just extrude these across, probably all the way till here, really, um, and just create a shape like that. We'll probably need to do a cut over here anyway, just because we've got this shoulder sort of ending. But you know, that's another problem. That's another. That's another problem for another time, sort of thing. <laughs> No need to worry about that right now. Okay, so something like that. And then over here, again, we can probably unite these like like this. Uh, and we could probably even do something like that if we want to, but obviously that's not going to work out very well. So we want to create polygons uh, sort of going like this, you see. And now we can, we can uh, t you know, churn these out even more towards... Well, something like that. So basically, this is this is the shape that we're we're sort of looking for, um, which I think works okay in this instance. Um, okay. Now, what we want to do is basically expand this to the to over here. Again, on this side, expand it like this, and then expand this one like that. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna go all the way up here and probably try and capture some more of this shape in the process something like that we obviously have some some we're gonna have some issues with these uh, points but until we get to that point until we get to them to you know to deal with them uh, we want to create a general shape uh, to create a general loops so you may want to check your loops and how they feed into each other so see for example this one uh, if we add more geometry on that side, just to basically make sure that everything is not uh, open-ended. Um, so what we want to do is basically create sort of the the ebb and flow, if I can, if I can, if I can call it that way. So something like that, and you can see how this sort of feeds that way. I'm not exactly, you know, I'm not exactly in love with it. But you see, this flow is okay, but this one goes that way. Um, so it, I think it, I think it's basically it's important to understand why uh, it sort of goes this way, um, and it's mainly because we have these sort of intersections here, and there's nothing really we can do about that unless we change the topology a lot more. So then we want to pick this up and take it all the way over here. Um, you may want to bevel these edges, by the way, just for a smoother transition, which again, it's really entirely up to you and, and how, how nice you want the mesh to look like. Um, obviously, every, every 3D artist has his own, has his own process to, to be doing these things. And I think it's very important that you find your own sort of style. And the reason why I say that is because you may want to refine it more. So you may want to refine the process more than what other people do or you may want to not refine it as much. So just select these two polygons and then press M on the keyboard and say uh, connect at last, which is fine. But you see now we've created this polygon here that we can sort of like drag upwards and pretty much create this spike shape over here, which is quite nice that we can do that. I'm just gonna delete it for now as we don't want to go that way uh, yet. So you can see that each of these spikes is going to have a sort of an individual sort of way of, of dealing with it. So um, that looks okay. Now we may want to continue um, like that. What we basically, what we want to do is we want to be able to go around the, um, you know, around this shape. So uh, probably something like that. 
okay and can we connect these sure should work in theory it works fine so you see we've got that triangle there so that came out quite nicely over here we're not so lucky because if we extrude we're going to go this way which is not exactly what we want we can potentially just bring in some more polygons um, so we just extrude um, well actually I'm not I'm not a fan of what's going on either over here so let's just try extrude this out like that and we'll extrude this out like this um, because we obviously have a bit of a of a challenge here as you can see right so then we can extrude this upward and this upward it's gonna be two polygons there unfortunately just because of how the mesh is over here um, I mean in theory if we eliminate this entire you know dissolve edge like that and if we can move this across over in here it's obviously not gonna hold the shape as well but in theory we can still do it and get away with it and then you know we've got this over here not ideal so what if we can delete that yeah I mean this face basically has four polygons as you can see hmm okay okay this can work um, okay so we'll do the same thing as we did before yeah drag it this way drag it this way and then we obviously can do can come along this way so this point goes over here and this point will go over here so just basically connect these two at center it's not too bad it's not ideal as I've said but it's not too bad either okay and now we want to create this shape over here again each of these will prove will have its own set of challenges like I've mentioned before so we can potentially take this all the way across so basically we want to bring we want to reach this edge over here um, okay so that's fine and then we obviously want to bring this all the way to the edge and just bridge it not very idealistic um, okay this is not going to work out very well is it so you see this polygon here is just is just incredibly sort of forced through which is not exactly what we want either so we'll just add a polygon over there I don't want to be going around creating sort of geometry that I don't want either so yeah okay okay so what I would propose is actually we delete all of these polygons that we've just created around here right we delete all these polygons we don't want them just delete them off and what we're gonna do is we're going to create a nice mesh around this yeah around this piece here so including over here we're just gonna add a vertex over here and we're just basically gonna do this you know bring it as close to that point as possible we're gonna do this and then just gonna do something like that and we obviously will need to do something like this so you know connect these two connect these two put this over here and this one we want to create more of the geometry like that and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to create this as a separate object these spikes over here I think it's gonna work out a lot better for us uh, you know just basically introduce a new plane in so an idea to do this is basically you know select this edge extrude uh, extrude again select this face and just delete it and now we've got this polygon to work with 
um, and basically we um, use this as a sort of a basis for our you know our topology so you know split up the polygon take one over there take one over here um, this can probably go all the way to the edge this will pro this will need an extrusion something like that and then this one obviously will need an extrusion gonna have to add some geometry in the middle okay so you can understand sort of like what the thought process is here um, then go this way so you can see we have this sort of shape so if I, if I deselect the in front option and now I can see you know I can see a bit better uh, we can see what's going on so we want to drag this over here actually rather than that's the other side so we don't want to enter that side yet um, again we want to come all the way up here um, we, may, we want to capture this sort of this form so oh, sorry um, let's select this edge go across it like that select this edge take it all the way to the bottom yeah and then we can actually connect these two edges and these two edges like that so we've got we've got that geometry going for us uh, in essence now obviously we'll just want to add a few uh, you know a bit more geometry so for example in here if you look at if you look at that um you know we've got this sort of like this this sort of curve here so if you want to model that in that's fine um obviously you're gonna have to sort of uh, make it match so yeah well to be honest I don't think I like it I don't think I want to add that in as of now I'll just leave it like that okay so the, re the reason why I'm doing this is because um, you know, if I if I all Z and select everything in here, for example, and then Shift H, I'll be able to just see this geometry only. So that's going to make it a lot easier for me to to work with it, uh, just to see where all these points are going to sort of like land. Um, so you know, for example, this helps me here a little bit because I've got these points, so I can you know I can sort of like go downwards. Um, this I probably want to drag it a bit further down um, now we want to extrude again we'll probably want to reach a point like that again not exactly the most idealistic of situations uh, just because of how the shape is so I'm just gonna drag this upwards and then just do something like that and then just add something just add some thickness in the middle but we don't need to add the thickness yet actually we're just gonna have to uh, build some more on this rather than add any sort of thickness it's very easy to go to high resolution but well to a higher resolution so obviously it's quite low but you know you've got to basically work on the big shapes before moving to anything else than you know other than that so for example over here and the reason why you know I separated the objects and this is definitely gonna help me with um, d you know modeling this a lot quicker for example I can do something like that here and then over here not ideal um, we can obviously we can end in the triangle if we want to yeah probably do that you know just end in a triangle in this situation so just select these two edges and do that it's going to be a lot more a lot more useful to us these spikes will not be animated they don't have to break their form in any way so better to do something like that than to um want to 
sort of like really have the hassle. And then we've basically done the spikes now and we want to add some geometry like that. So that's gonna definitely help. Uh, now we want these two edges to go downwards. Okay, and we want this to go all the way here. We want this to go like that. So once the sort of like the whole shoulder is done, you basically can extrude even further down to help with the shape and create a sort of a seamless transition between the mesh underneath, sorry, the mesh that we've created uh, earlier uh, topology we created earlier because we're going to make it into one object anyway so that's going to be okay right okay and now for the final sort of like piece here yeah this is not going to work is it just do something like that and then we can connect okay so we've got this shape basically so if we press alt h now we brought the other mesh in so you can see there's a bit of a you know, it's quite a bit of a, of a, of a problem here it's a, in terms of a, it's chaotic. So, some of the things that we can do straight off the bat now is basically hover over this one and press L on the keyboard. That will select the whole mesh that we just made over there. And then one thing that I would do in this scenario, um, yeah, so this is just me, basically, I'm just going to say, but this is just me showing you what I would do in this scenario to make things a lot better. So this is a trick, it's not a trick, it's more of a, you know, a workflow sort of situation that I want to share with you guys. So what I would do at this stage, uh, I would basically, you know, with this selected, just press P on the keyboard and then select, do selection, and that will, you know, uh, put make these into two meshes, which is fine. So now with this mesh selected, right, uh, we're basically going to go into the modifier stack and apply the shrink wrap, which is fine. That that then makes this form now be 100%, um, you know, the model the way it has been modeled. Right. So okay. So now we've got some problems because basically the there's, there's clearly space in between. So we'll go into edit mode, right, and then we'll change over on the snap to from face to vertex, for example, and we'll select that vertex and we can then snap it over here so that vertex will in essence snap to the vertexes it doesn't matter if the vertex is from the from this mesh or from another mesh just to help out just click over here and just select uh, wireframe and that would basically in theory help you to see it better right okay so now we've got that and then here we've got nothing to connect it to so we're just going to change from vertex to edge and then we can basically get this to drop on an edge um, like that. Oh, sorry. I think the problem that we've got is basically we've got this sort of dragon shoulder pad in the background. So what we need to do is basically, um, you know, hide it. And for some reason it won't. Let me just try. Yeah, okay, so now it hid. No, sorry, I need to select both of these meshes and do that. And now it's now it's hidden, right? Okay, so now without without hidden, things are going to be easier because I can actually make it snap. So you can see how easily I can just sort of make this into a, you know, create a sort of a seamless transition. So you can see that there, applied, and then this here. Just make sure, you, you know, you're going to have to hover around a little bit until you get them to snap properly but it, it in essence it does work so um, and then any sort of issues that you find going forward like here for example you can sort out later when we basically do uh, optimization so same thing just snap it and then so in terms of optimization what do I mean by that um, you know in this instance you can pick this and you can drag it over there. So, you know, basically optimizing um, the geometry a little bit so it matches with what's underneath. But basically, you've, you've gone from something that had a terrible amount of polygons to something that has a lot less. 
uh, because because you 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 were going to add a lot of polygons just to basically accommodate for these uh, clearly different type of geometry type of uh, um, you know mesh. So you can see that now that's basically unified. So if we take the wireframe off and we have a look, this is what happens. This is this is what we've got so far. Okay, so. Again, it's still work to be done on it. It's not a final product, but I think it works very well. Now, from a from a um, you know the re the problem that we're now facing, we know we're obviously facing another problem, is that if we go back to our you know add this mesh into this mesh. So I'll just show you in a second. So I've got this mesh selected, and I'm going to select that one, and then say Control J then basically, well, nothing has changed that much, but in essence, the mesh here has been altered. So, you know, just, just to see again, so control J, and you can see how the mesh alters. And the reason why it alters is because it takes the shrink wrap modifier on it again. So what we need to do is we first need to finish the rest of the shoulder pad before we actually merge these together in order to apply the shrink wrap to the uh, main mesh and then move and then add these on once we've settled with the with the model. So I'm just going to get out of the, you know, out of this um, uh, isolation mode. And this is what we've got. I'm just going to select, select the shoulders and just isolate it all. So basically, this is what we've got so far. Obviously, we can go a bit higher poly like like I, I said to you guys before. I would definitely look at beveling some of these edges, for example, you know, just really trying to get more detailed chamfering or beveling, or sorry, not beveling, chamfering, I wanted to, I wanted to say. So we can, you know, we can obviously, obviously help with that mesh, or we could subdivide if we wanted to, so that should work as well. Um, but yeah, uh, this is basically how we're going to continue on with the rest of the shoulder. So we're we'll basically um, going to start modeling again on the... Um, on this part here so let's just continue on with modeling uh, going this way now I think yeah I need to do this sort of like shape around here and then go all the way above um, obviously I didn't need to extrude these um, to this point as it just you know sort of like comes naturally to do so I'm also gonna add a loop on this side as well just because that will help me with the shape overall um, yeah I think we're gonna do that like so and then like that and now we obviously want to extrude once to get close to the base here and we're basically gonna repeat the process that we did before with the other spike because with the other spikes because it's gonna be you know as I said it's gonna work out very well uh, not to integrate this in the actual shoulder pads, so more like making them like two parts, which is going to be okay. And obviously, we can play with the texturing around in order to emphasize that uh, sort of point of uh, you know the, the way we, we lay out the geometry. So I'm just gonna again just run around around this shape rather than um, um, you know try and 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 start with the spikes now. So. Just going to do that if we look at the other side we can see what we've done there so for example over here we can add a loop and that's going to help us to sort of like bend this shape a little bit uh, which is great so i'm going to do that and then also going to drag this on like so i don't like how this topology is looking like so i've got to make sure that they flow naturally rather than just uh, sporadically everywhere um, like I've said in the you know before it's very important to do something like that I think it's also very important to work out a sort of a mirror like effects so or whatever you did on this side try and do the same on the other side so I've done that bit there now we just want to continue on with this um, so same thing you can see here that it's it's the spike is sort of like uh, bulging out which is fine. I just need to make sure that my geometry um, is working, you know, uh, for me. Now, in this instance over here, for example, you can see that we've got this sort of like shape underneath, and we're gonna deal with that later. There's no point in dealing with that right now. But in the meantime, um, 
this doesn't stop us from sort of like the laying the foundation so you know just um, extruding these this shape here is gonna work just fine um, just bring it outwards you know and now pressing F here I can bridge these very nicely with this add-on that I've got just make sure they're all sort of like flow into each other properly rather than um, as I said randomly sitting everywhere um, okay so that's okay like that in essence the more you do this the better you get at it and and to be honest I don't do a lot of retopology because I, most of the things that I work with are just um, you know things like um, uh, effects and and other such things into in 3d and blender especially so this for me is very good as a as a sort of a learning um, you know this video I'm learning with you guys as well some of the things that I do and just wanted to like really emphasize the thought process that I I sort of apply to when, when I do this type of modeling so you can see basically um, sort of like the my my personal pitfalls on this and and also how I like to sort of like deal with it so um, in this instance for example I don't really like what I've done here I don't like the fact that you know I just um, I would rather I would rather just just uh, add extra loops here if, if that's okay that's you know that makes the shape a lot better um, I don't like to sort of um, reuse you know the same thing over and over again too much and then it will look won't look too good so yeah if I do this you see how this loop is just not gonna sort of like cut it for me if we look on the other side we actually did a better job here so yeah I'm just gonna I'm just gonna push these polygons like that so I'm just gonna do that and then I'm just gonna do something like this. Um, again, not a fan. Uh, right, let's just delete all of these from this side. I don't like them. So you see, this is all about how we, how we basically align these two shapes here. Um, and I'll tell you where the problem also comes from is because I've got this sort of like edge here but I don't on this side because I've created extra geometry um, so yeah okay so this side comes with two faces and the other side sort of comes with three and yeah yeah because it continues from this point onwards so that's the problem basically so if we actually eliminate this entirely over here right and we somehow sort of like push these things through and then connect this part with this part something like that then we have a better sort of like flow okay so we did something like that basically there and you know I can come over here and just do something like this basically uh, which I think overall is going to help my sort of like situation so again just bring these shapes a little bit over and then what we can do is basically add this as a third sort of shape that goes all the way in here so I can do something like that again I think this is going to be a lot more useful I can probably get this whole loop from here so just select all of that and just dissolve these edges uh, I think overall it's not going to suffer the you know the the whole model is not going to suffer for it uh, Dissolve vertices. Yeah Okay, I like the dissolve sort of feature is quite nice quite a nice uh, feature for I mean blender is full of nice feature isn't it? So right I can now pull this through um, Again see if I do that it will just go all the way around so I don't really want that it, you know it has to be a different solution sort of to my to my predicament here so I think the solution would be just to extrude really so if we extrude this way and then we also extrude that way you know until we reach this point because we don't need anything else we just need to reach you know just as I said just wrap around this shape 
So we do something like that, and then this shape, yeah, this shape I'll take it this way. And then I'll go upwards with this other one. And then go to the side, and then just continue on with this. Obviously I don't want to add too much geometry, so I'm just going to move it all the way to the end here, because I don't know exactly how they're going to link yet. It's, it's fine if you don't have an idea until you actually reach that point to apply the geometry because you're not always going to know and to be honest a lot of times what you'll do is you'll lay down all the geometry and then realize actually there was a better way of doing this so you'll just go back and reiterate really on it so you can see uh, one other thing that I want to do now is just basically select all of these polygons like that and just shift H so I can just focus on these rather than seeing the other ones as well so in this instance here I can do something like this and just basically connect them um, okay now I'm just gonna do something like that again this is the point where you could like really go to town on it like this is this is normally what people would do they'll just do something like that and then yeah I don't think I want to end in a triangle though so Let's just try and think here a little bit. So we do that. We do this. So yeah, I think I think whatever I do, I'm not gonna end up in a triangle, but it's not gonna be the best of shapes either. So as I said, not really a fan of it but the shape works. Okay, so that's basically it for that side. Now all we need to do now is basically connect, you know, do the spikes basically, which I'll, I'll repeat the process that we've applied here. And that will be it for that side of the shoulder. So now that uh, basically we've done these spikes, we haven't yet moved them on the edge or the vertexes yet because we don't, there's no point in doing that yet. Uh, what we want to do now is basically continue on with the shoulders so right about here underneath again I'm just gonna select everything here well actually I'm just gonna select press L on the keyboard so like this one and just say well we can deactivate the mirror really we don't need to see the mirror and I'm just gonna select that one and just press shift H so I can so I only see this sort of this um, you know this mesh only I'm just gonna deactivate in front just so I can have a little bit of an idea of what's going on in here you can basically see that I can push these things through like that and that should be okay in terms of the you know trying to um, sort out this geometry I can probably add another point here which is not going to be very bad to do because it just gives me a bit more sort of like resolution to work with now so I've got that there that will bake just fine um, I'm probably gonna want to pull this point like that so that that's gonna be okay now we want to do the second part of this and to be honest I'm probably gonna do a separation yet again so I'm um, going to select you know for example these now I'm just gonna select that one extrude it out do a loop here and you just delete this so now I've got two separate meshes and I'll select this one and basically well yeah what I'm gonna do is basically um, select this one alone and just shift H so that's it I've just now hit everything uh, also, let me just get out of edit mode and just select this one and just say I don't want to have it in front and then when we select this mesh again and we press edit mode we're back to where we were um, okay so let me just drag this out um, so yeah we'll just continue on this way We'll probably do something like here just so we can get this you know get this sort of um, geometry so basically if we go above want to do something like that 
again, I think always try and work outwards from your mesh. So what I mean by this is basically go towards the, the sides. So just you can cover more ground more efficiently. So again, I'm just going to do something like that. And I'm going to do a loop cut right about here so that I can do this. Drag it out like that, do something like this. And then just extrude downwards, extrude again, extrude again. See how that sort of like flows into, into itself, which is quite nice. And then just do that. Again, this is where the mesh sort of starts twisting a little bit. So this is the point where we want to start making the underneath sort of things. We will need to model some of this as well. Uh, we don't need a, a hell of a lot of detail on that, but you know, you do need to do it. So again, because I'm going to have this, I mean, if you, if you look, we can, we'll probably need to unite these together, all of them. So this is why basically I'm just going to do these sort of like, uh, you know, massive shapes. So I'm not going to worry about how many segments I need to have because there's no point because we're going to have to modify this topology anyway. So something like that basically, just go really all around. But I'm going to undo because I don't want that to get in my way yet. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I've just I've started it but I'm going to leave it there because I want to do the top really. Um, this is the This is the one that I need to focus on. So something like that, and then just select these, extrude, extrude, extrude again, scale down if you need to, extrude, rotate, scale down, move them into position, maybe do another scale upwards, and yeah, just extrude all the way till here. Do another extrusion all the way to the side. Add a loop. Do another extrusion just to cover that area. Um, looking at this here, you can see that it's basically coming around like this. Um, so yeah, let's just do it this way. And then we've got some connection here, like that. The only thing I don't have is a connection over here, so I need to bring this over something like this, just in order to do that, this corner. And that's about it, really. That's about it with this, uh, with this side of the mesh. And then the underneath is quite a simple process. Um, you basically, as I said, you know, the way I would do it right now is you, you start doing that ring and then you work your way inside. Um, so I'm just going to do that and basically I'm going to, I'm going to show you how the mesh looks like fully re and then we can move on to a very quick bake on it as well. So now we've basically finished the uh, model on both sides. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is clearly a problem on the left side as the right side is positioned correctly while the left side is skewed off a little bit. Uh, no, no real problem. We're just going to go in x-ray mode, select everything and then just press G on the keyboard and uh, on the uh, Y axis. Yeah, on so G, Y axis and just, sorry not Y, G, X axis and just move the model just a little bit over to basically overlap the high poly and we should be ready to go. So now we're just gonna go over into, sub, into Substance Painter. I'm going to use the automatic UV unwrap for this one as we're not currently in the process of making proper UVs. We just wanna see if the baking will come out correctly on the other side. So see you guys in just a bit. So I've just um, you know baked the mesh, did some very basic uh, baking. As you can see, we've got a few errors here underneath, but that's the part that will never be seen anyway. There's nothing really happening underneath there because we've got the shoulders of the character. Uh, I've just added some basic texture over, just did something very quickly in two minutes, just you know randomly dropped in brushes and such, just to prove, just to show 
you know the quality of the mesh a little bit this is automatically unwrapped by substance painter so it's not exactly the most amazing uh, unwrap that the uh, you know the software could could be doing but uh, it's it's still doable still usable and again you know uh, we want to unwrap this properly uh, going forward but you can see now how the shape is being held by this geometry uh, we can probably increase the subdivision levels a little bit just to give it a more of a curvier look i mean you know computers nowadays do are able to, to sort of like you know um, keep that going uh, if we switch to um, wire frame uh, you should be able to see just how many polygons we've got so it's basically not a lot um, you, you know these shoulders are made quite of a just of a handful of polygons really so i hope you guys found this uh, tutorial um, useful uh, like always uh, you can find the high poly mesh in the description below if you want to download it and, and try it out yourself it should be quite straightforward um, and I, as i said i hope you guys enjoy it please subscribe if you do and i'll see you in the i'll see you in the next one cheers